Hey, business building warrior, welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. I'm your host today, Jim Cockrum. And if you weren't aware, this is the show where we've interviewed hundreds of students who have built amazing businesses selling products on Amazon. Our students are from all over the world. Where you live doesn't matter. And they're from all economic and demographic and age categories imaginable. They're educated in some cases and other cases. They never went to college. They've got all different manners of backgrounds, but they have one thing in common. They've used the proven Amazon course, which is the flagship course in this podcast. You can find a link to it at silentgym.com. And they've used that course to build amazing businesses. And they've come on our show, hundreds of them, to share their stories. Very real, raw. Here's how it happened. Here's the mistakes I made. Here's the risks I took. Here's how it worked out. I love hearing these stories. There's always something new to learn. And there will be on today's episode as well as we interview young Mr. Dylan Schultz, who's hired his dad and a couple friends, and they have a seven figure business using the strategies that we teach in this community. It's a beautiful story. He went from being a, a working in a school, considering a teaching career to losing his job during COVID, going all in. Now he's got, like I said, a beautiful business that he's built. He read the Silent Sales Machine book early on as well. That was an older version. That book has recently been updated. If you weren't aware, you can go to silentsalesmachine.com. There's a link again at the only website you ever need as a fan of this show. Go to silentgym.com. You'll see a link to that book right now as I'm recording this. And for the Next several weeks, we're going to continue this promotion. You can get that book completely free. It's the book that's the foundation of this podcast and this entire community. Over a million people have read that book since it first came out. It's in version 11 right now. It just got updated. You can get a free copy if you'd like by texting the following word to the following phone number. Are you ready? Write this down or it will be in the show notes as well, as will be all the links we discussed today. But the phone number is 507. 507- 800-0090. And you want to text the word free to that phone number. One more time, 507-800-0090. That link is in the show notes as well. That gets you 100% free access. We're not going to spam you a whole bunch of other stuff. This is just one text with the book. And then once or twice a month or so, that's about it. We're going to send you some other free training opportunities when we have online Zoom sessions, Amazon training webinars, that sort of thing. You can opt out anytime, of course, but that gets you on our text messaging list if you're in the US or Canada. If you live outside the US, please send a message to our support team or check the show notes for other details on how you can get a free copy of that book, the full book, no obligation for anything else. There's a link and you can go grab and read through the content that launched this community and set so many people towards building beautiful businesses using the internet creatively. That's what we do here. Well, today's story, like I said, is Dylan. He started off with no e-commerce background. He's now built a beautiful business and he shares the details, what he sells, how we started, some of those first mistakes he made, how he's learned some lessons over the years that have allowed him to build a beautiful business that he's now so excited. He's traveled. He mentions he wants to visit 50 countries soon. He's visited almost that many already, just being able to have the freedom and the flexibility of lifestyle to do the things that he wants to do. So he's very passionate about it. You're going to hear that in his voice. And it was truly a pleasure spending some time with him today. So enjoy this episode, Business Building Warrior. Keep in mind, If you like this, man, we've got hundreds of episodes like this of people using the proven Amazon course to build beautiful businesses, create the lifestyle of their dreams. That's what we do around here. Come be a part of it. All right, let's jump over and meet Mr. Dylan Schultz. Hey, Dylan, welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. Good to see you, man. Yeah, it's great to be here. I've been looking forward to this for a while. We've had a couple of delays, but I'm really excited to, to share my story with you guys. Yeah, man, I can't wait to dig in as as well. Uh, so let's let's jump in, man. You go. Yeah. So it started off. Um, I was driving my car, and as I do, I often listen to podcasts as I drive. And in this case, it wasn't your podcast just yet, though I can't remember what podcast it was. But they just mentioned the idea that oh, you can sell on Amazon. And I'm like, I just had no idea that even existed. That selling on Amazon, I, I knew like eBay, right, and those sorts of things from when I was even younger. But Amazon, I just I didn't really realize that a lot of people don't realize that 
on Amazon, literally almost everything that's being sold on there is actually sold by sellers like sellers like us, right? Although yeah, they'll, very they'll few read people f- realize that. I think mm-hmm. it's like well over half, way over half the stuff is third-party oh, sellers, right? Especially if they're Vast like majority. people over the over the age of 30 or 40, for sure, over the age of 40, for sure. I, I tell people often, like I, I sell on Amazon, they're like, oh, really? What? What does that really mean? And then I tell me, I do know that when you buy a product that if you scroll down, you'll see like people fulfilled by so-and-so. Sometimes it's fulfilled by Amazon themselves, of course, but a lot of times, most of the time, it's fulfilled by sellers. So I didn't even really realize that either. I heard the idea vaguely about that you can sell on Amazon, but I didn't quite get that. So anyway, this podcast basically explained some of that basics and gave me the whole, as a lot of people start with, the whole retail arbitrage kind of model that it seems like goes around quite a bit. Uh, so I started off as I think a lot of people do, um, go into their dollar store or Walmart or something like that and looking for some discount cheap items to go and sell on Amazon. I got the Amazon seller app, downloaded that, got all that ready. And yeah, I went into a, I went into a dollar store. That was my, my very first step um, that I took because uh, in, in the summer, basically what I was doing was I had just gotten home from, uh, I was living somewhere else. And I came back home, so I was looking for a new thing to do. I was mowing lawn for a farmer that had a big yard, so lots of work to do there. So I did that about half time. So the other half of my time, I've always been quite entrepreneurial. And so I've wanted to figure something out. And this was the idea that I came up with. That's why I found the podcast because I was yeah. looking How up. long ago was this? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. This is the uh, summer of 2019. Okay. Um, about four so years this, ago as we're recording yeah. this. We're in July of 2023 mm-hmm. now. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. I forgot to mention that. So yeah, this is four years ago. And uh, yeah, so while I was on the back of that lawnmower, I proceeded to listen to many more podcasts, learning more about this. And yeah, I'm a very action-oriented person. So the first thing I wanted to do was just go into a dollar store and buy some stuff. So I went in there. I remember I bought some dog toys. I bought some other toys, like just like like that children would play with. I got an HDMI cord, I think. Uh, just some Just some random stuff at this dollar store. Um, near where I lived had. And I brought those all home. And I remember laying it all on my bed. And my dad walked in and saw me and just like, oh, what do I, what's, what's this all about? Right. Um, but but interestingly enough, he was actually interested. He's like, this this is interesting, actually. He he didn't look at it like it was stupid. He was like, hmm, that's that's interesting. Uh, that's that's that kind of makes sense. Um, but I'm not sure how that'll go with these items because those items look like crap and they were crap and 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 they didn't work out. So long story short, that those items didn't sell, but kind of how it worked was I remember. I had my weigh scale, you know, those weigh scales that you have just to weigh yourself, um, yeah. like you stand on and, it, and it's not the digital ones, just like it has a little thing like whatever that moves around. Yeah, a little and dial. There. Yeah, a little dial. Yeah. And it was like my grandparents weigh scale. And that's what I used. And you can't really see the weight. So I had to like angle myself to like look underneath because it's, it, it, you know, like other scales have like a, a thing on the side so you can put a box on there. And you can see the weight. This thing, I couldn't even see the weight properly. I had to like bend my neck. When you're sending to... in shipments, you're just using the bathroom scale basically, and you're covering up the numbers. And like that's how you got started. Yeah, exactly. So I'm Making just trying sure to. You're staying under your 50 pound limit, right? Exactly. Yeah, I'm just getting because you got to weigh the box and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'm just just weighing the box with that thing, and uh, I package it up and and sent that out just just like that, very simply, just a bunch of random things from a dollar store. And then I did FBA to start off with, so it went right to Amazon. So for those that aren't aware with that. Basically, like I'm not shipping the items to the customers. I ship it to Amazon. Amazon sends me a shipping label. They give me a UPS partner or whatever you're using, but they give you like a discount if you use their sponsored carrier and then you get it for really cheap. I was pretty impressed with how cheap I could send it out. And, and yes, yeah, so sent them out there and they sat there and did nothing except for one item. It was one toy. And that one toy I bought for four bucks and sold for 20. And that was really what showed me that this thing, this mm-hmm. thing is real. And you bought it just based on instinct. You're like, ah, I think this might sell. Yeah, I literally went random. I went into a dollar store and it was just on instinct. Just, okay, yeah, here's these look cheap. Maybe I could sell them for more. Yeah. I, I did have a, like I had the Amazon seller scanner app, right? Um, okay. So, so I was doing some of that too. Yeah. Um, so like, I mean, I would scan it and some of these items, they would come up for higher prices, right? So like it wasn't complete instinct right. um, because I was still seeing that. But what I found out is that just because this Crayola marker set is $30 on Amazon doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually going to sell it for $30. Yeah, or it doesn't mean anyone's it. paid that price recently, right? You can learn how to do the research is a big part of this, right? But it, yeah, exactly. hey, I love your spirit of like, hey, let's just get in there and try it. Let's just see what, yeah, what, and, what does and it. Like, and for those of you that are thinking like, 
about starting something like this. Literally, my upfront investment for my story I just told you so far is under a hundred dollars. Oh, like, of course, yeah. It's it's very low if you include the including the Amazon shipping and everything I had to do. I'm um, mm-hmm. buying some labels from Staples and putting the labels on there. All the things that I had to buy for that first shipment were like under a hundred dollars. I recommend buying a proper way scale, maybe from yeah. Amazon. They're, they're they're quite cheap. I bought one very quickly later. I, on. I've heard of um, people holding the box and standing on the scale and subtracting their body weight. I mean, that gets oh you, right. Interesting. I didn't think of that. No, I just kind of did the yeah. whole angling my head around thing. I, yeah, I can right. See the I, number. If, you know, you're a 150 pound guy. You step up there. You, the scale better be under 200, or it's too heavy, right? So that's yeah, what, exactly. Oh, yeah, that, that that works too. Yeah, no kidding. So yeah, there's lots of funny little ways you can start. So just any little excuse, like oh man, like I don't have a weight scale or I don't have a proper mm-hmm. whatever. Just all those all those things you can find little easy workarounds and just send out your first thing because. Once you see your first sale, it'll give you motivation to go get more. That's what I found. Absolutely. So. Yeah, that I, I love those little... That's one of the reasons why I say just get started. I was talking with my son last night about the frustration we feel when we see people getting ready to get ready, to get ready to get ready yeah. to start a business. Like, oh, you could do that for years, man. Just sell something. Get in there. Like, oh, I don't have mm-hmm. my, my separate <clears throat> bank account credit card yet. Like, right. Oh, that, I don't care. Sell something, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because no, once exactly. you get that little momentum boost now it starts to click it's like wow i've never made money on the internet before that was kind of fun i just made eight dollars yeah. that's kind of cool maybe i could scale this and then you use that that uh, validation to create momentum to get all those little mm-hmm. things done that you got to do yeah I yeah. It. yeah the starting like the starting position that's something i want to share right off the bat now is that like it's not hard to get over that first hurdle of, of just starting and as we go and i tell more things that we've I've been doing or you hear other people who have sold a lot on amazon you may like 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 i did get a little overwhelmed of like all these things you have to do and i still get that way because i'm doing other business ventures on the side as well i'm always trying to do new things and i right away just remind myself wait remember how you started on amazon you just had a had your grandpa's your, your grandma and grandpa's way scale and you had a box and you had a couple labels and a couple toys from a dollar store. And that's all you have to do to get started with anything else too. It's just very, very simple. And then you just, oh, I need this. I need that. And it naturally just grows from there. A lot of right. things. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You don't have to learn it all before you get started. <laughs> Actually, we that's why we talk all the time around here. I don't know if you've heard me say it before, Dylan, but we believe in just in time education <clears throat> instead of mm-hmm. just in case education. <laughs> like I'm not going to teach yeah. you this stuff you need to know a year from now. I'm going to teach you the yeah. stuff you need to know today to start making a little bit of money. And the stuff you need to know next week, we'll learn that next week. That's how our content's laid out. And yeah. So you can I, wade in nice and slow, taking tiny risks, validating each new step and getting the confidence you need to proceed a little further, a little deeper, maybe spend a little more money. That's the way we teach it. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Uh, it's, just, it's kind of nostalgic for me at this point because I'm a young guy. So four years feels like a long time to me still. Um, so for me, four years ago when I started and like it wasn't long after that, uh, maybe three and a half years ago or something like that. It was still 2019 when I first found out, found your podcast. Mm. Um, and I remember as you're sharing some of these things, I'm like, oh, I'm getting a little hint of nostalgia there. Of, oh yeah, I remember listening to that. <laughs> remember me, hearing so, me say that, right? Just Yeah, so it, it definitely yeah. stuck. It definitely That's stuck. Awesome. Uh, Obviously, the exact wording is always what's going to get changed because you hear, I hear your wording, and then it just gets translated into my own words in my head of how I understood it. But it's, it's still the same principle, the same message. And I definitely have, uh, that definitely spoke to me then, related to me. And uh, yeah, so I can get into uh, that next then about how I kind of discovered you and your community because that happened right after this, basically. Yeah, absolutely, um, man. Your story to tell. Let's keep it going. <laughs> Yeah, so that was the very beginning. I had done that, and I was like, okay, yeah, the one toy though. So that's that's not exactly a business, but it, it is a start. And so then I started to do a little bit of research, trying to find more more uh, people that were doing this. And um, I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure I found your podcast before I found your Facebook group. I think that's how it started. I started listening to the the silent radio, or how does it go again? Silent, silent sales machine radio. Yeah. That's silent right. sales machine radio. That's right. That's right. Yeah, sorry. Um, I can't even remember the exact wording of the podcast I'm on right now. That's a little It's sad. my job to remember that, man. You don't have to. Don't have to. <laughs> oh, yeah. But anyway, and I even love that idea, actually. Like that whole silence. Like that was one thing that stuck with me about what, why I was tracked to the podcast. I love the idea of creating machines or mechanisms that are silent, that are like passive. They can make as passive as possible. Um, hence the whole FBA thing. I really love that because it doesn't 
like hold me down like a lot of brick and mortar type businesses do. It really gives me that that freedom. And so I think that's kind of what spoke to me at first as I was discovering even just the name of your podcast and then the general vibe of what you guys were talking about as well. Um, and so that was kind of what started off the attraction. I can't remember the exact moment I listened to it and all those sorts of things, but I just remember it getting into my podcast cycles and then leading to uh, me join a Facebook community. And that's really where things started to change for me was in the Facebook community. So I started to message in there and have some conversations, ask some questions as people do when they're new, not unlike most people that were messaging when I was on there just the other day, same kind of people. And uh, so I was one of those just messaging like, hey, how do I uh, how do I do this when I'm sending this to Amazon or how do I change whatever, whatever it was, little questions that you have along the way as you're getting started um, and got those questions answered. And eventually I asked I think I asked, or maybe I found them. I can't remember how that worked, but let's go with I asked. I think I eventually asked if anybody was from the Winnipeg area. Outside, I live nearby Winnipeg. It's the city. It's the capital city of Manitoba. So I'm from Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you guys know where Manitoba is, it's the middle of Canada, right north of North Dakota. And uh, so I was asking if anybody was from Winnipeg and, and I was interested in like maybe meeting up in person so I could have like a face to put to all this, like a real person face. And then this one lady private message me and said like, Hey, yeah, I've been selling on Amazon, but I've actually recently stopped other things in my life have taken priority. She, she was a, I don't know, like a middle-aged lady. She had another job already, like a full-time career. This is like a side thing for her. And she ended up stopping for a variety of reasons, but, but because of that, she's like, I'm willing to tell you absolutely anything. Cause I don't care <laughs> because I'm no longer doing it. So I'd gladly tell you whatever you want to know. I, I wouldn't, I would spare no detail. I'll just tell you what I was doing. And so we met up um, because of your Facebook community. We we met and then we got to meet up in person at a Boston pizza. And we had a nice conversation there. And she kind of, oh, uh, well, she had, it was a lot of conversations but that we had, but she got to introduce me to the idea of selling food on Amazon. So that was kind of where things started to change for me. And that's what kind of combined with your whole, I believe, like the replans model with finding items on like a dollar store. So like a dollar store, you got these items, they're good, they're fine, there's one toy, right? I went back to try to find that toy, it's not there anymore. It's constantly, it's very inconsistent. Mm. Whereas like, not saying I'm selling ketchup, but like say you have a bottle of ketchup, that bottle of ketchup is going to always be there, <laughs> right? Like it's it's going to stay there. And so I, I watched one of your replans videos recently, just kind of get my head back into it. I remember you going and you find this one, I think it was also a food product that you had done on one of your videos. Um, and that was just a good, okay, yeah, that's a good example and I was starting to listen. I think at that point, I already had heard about your replans model, if I'm getting my timing right. And so I was like, okay, that makes sense. Food makes sense. It's also an extra barrier for people. And that also, that's a good thing. So like people don't want to deal with food sometimes because it's expirable um, and has other complications like that. There's food safety stuff, whatever. People get kind of nervous about food. And so like, that's one of the one of the tips that I give people is like, in the beginning, the more difficult you can make something, you can just add a little step. like like food because it has expiry dates, multiple seasons, stuff like that going on. That's a good, you shouldn't say that as a bad thing. You see that as a, as a good thing. That's like a, a good challenge to jump over that will then leave a bunch of people in, in the dust kind of, because they're just gonna, not going to do it. Absolutely. Um, so getting those little unique advantages, you know, going that little yeah. extra mile, there's mm-hmm. so much m- more available to you. If you're willing to work a little harder than the next guy to dig a little yeah. deeper, you know, some people get frustrated and they go, well, I spent an hour at my local Walmart and I scanned 50 things and nothing's profitable. This is a scam. And like, oh my goodness. (laughs) Oh yeah. I take the time to convince this person that they are just a few inches away. I'm like, you're so close to getting it. But yeah, it doesn't surprise me a bit. You scanned 50 barcodes. I mean, anybody can go to Walmart and scan 50 barcodes. Come on. You know, let's dig a little deeper here. Uh, and I will say this, every Walmart in the United States or in the world is chock full of thousands of winning replan ASINs. Yep. You're not going to find them scanning barcodes <laughs> and you're not going to find them in the clearance aisle either. But if you're willing to go a little more off the beaten path than one Walmart is your only test field, yep. you're going to find some great stuff. Uh, like a, as you've discovered, go, a little, okay, go into food, go into, you know, I know people right now just to drop a little tip on people, give an example of what I'm talking about, Dylan, you might even appreciate this. If you're still in food, I've talked to a good number of people lately who they work the national chain sales. And what they do is as soon as stuff goes on sale, like you get, you know, 
buy one, get two free sale, good for a week only, whatever. Like, okay, well, this is a good replan. Well, it's going to go away in two weeks. So it's not really a true replan. But if you can get in and strike while it's hot and list the products merchant fulfilled, meaning you can put them up for sale before your shopping cart is checked out in the front of the store if you want to, you're making sales Mm -hmm. instantly. You've got a one week window before everyone else discovers that sale. And they're all sending it in FBA because those national chain sales stuff, anytime something like, let's say, you know, in the United States, Kroger puts something on sale nationwide. Well, that's just going to get flooded three weeks from now. FBA, you know, sending people mm-hmm. sending it. But for a one or two week window, that's a great price. And you can beat everyone else's price and make a lot of, you know, make a lot of sales very fast. So, you know, just having that little extra unique advantage, like, well, I don't want to ship stuff out of my house. Well, okay. You're walking away from a lot of money you could be making if you set up a system to do that. doesn't have to be you. It could be anybody. So that's just a little example of willing to do things a little differently than everyone else, put your own touch to it, find your own (laughs) unique local advantages and relationships. There's gold mines out there to to help make the point you were making. That's just one example. Yeah. Yeah. And another example of that is seasonal items. Like people uh, often avoid seasonal items because... Well, they go away in a season, but mm-hmm. guess what? It actually, I would argue that it really is a true replan because a seasonal item will always come back every season. Not, not, not every item will come back, but like Halloween will be Halloween next year as well, yep. right? And it's amazing how many items come back exactly the way they were before. And then there's also some change, whatever. But uh, yeah, there is there is always seasonal items to find and to sell. And uh, I know for a fact from doing a lot of searching and stuff that they change a lot each year as well. They'll add new ones. They'll change them up. But if you follow those trends and you stay on top of that, then your sales will just go up a lot during every seasonal holiday, which is a really, really great thing to do. Yeah. And there's always a new season coming up, man. There's not oh, many yeah. gaps on the calendar. No, there's looking. not. It's they're back to back to back mm-hmm. Halloween to Christmas to Valentine's to Easter and to then summer stuff, summer summer themed things. Um, so and that's yeah. my summer is my favorite. Like there are just so many, once it starts to get warm outside and people go back outside and we sold, man, how many, I, it had to have been thousands of watering cans <laughs> one year. <laughs> it was just as fast as we could get them. We were printing $8 at a time, man, just as fast as we could round these things up and they were just flying. But then that season comes to an end. Right. But I don't want to walk away from those opportunities. I love true, boring year-round replans. You can build a beautiful business off that. But yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. If you're willing to do a little more work than everyone else, dig a little deeper, pay attention to some trends, test some seasonal stuff a month or two before the season hits, start looking, paying attention and pounce when you see the opportunities. Or what a lot of people do is like, you know, they'll they'll scoop up the 70 to 90% off sales once the season's over and just save it until the next year if you got somewhere to store it. So again, just being willing to do the things that most people aren't willing to do. The crowd wants to go scan a barcode and make $20 for half an hour's worth of work, you know, scanning mm-hmm. 10 barcodes and come home with 20 to $50 to show for it. That's what the crowd wants to do. Get as far away from the crowd as you can. There's opportunity everywhere. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, another thing that I had, uh, I had tried doing was uh, toys as well. And it's a very hyper competitive uh, market. And so I'm not so sure about how well it's really going to work. I, I I had a hard time with it. It was one that I I no longer do currently. Um, but it reminded me of something you were just saying with the buying the nine percent off thing and then waiting a year. Um, I did find that some of the toys that I kind of ended up getting rid of, um, a year later, those toys were worth like three times as much because it just was gone. It didn't yeah. exist anymore. So you you create scarcity, you create rarity, like by doing stuff like hanging on to items. It's an idea I've been toying with recently. So just that whole nine percent off thing is another idea that yeah, it's an interesting idea because yeah, you hold on to them for a good year, like a lot. You need some storage space for that, but if you have a little corner somewhere where you could put a hundred items or twenty items or whatever, or even just ten just to test it out, that's definitely another way of doing that. We've actually got someone in our community who has done extremely well with buy and hold toys, specifically Legos. It's not all Legos, but if you know what you're doing, and we've actually got Mm -hmm. a course coming very soon, it's going to be part of the Proven Amazon course family of of courses. It's going to be at uh, provenbrickinvesting.com, provenbrickinvesting.com. I can't use the word Lego in the name of our course, right? But bricks, you know. Oh, I see. Provenbrickinvesting.com. And yeah, he's done extremely well for many years, just buying and holding Legos that he knows are going to go out. 
hold them like you said for it doesn't have to be a couple of years but you look at legos that expired the popular ones based on characters that are recognized that sort of thing from a few years ago and you're willing to hold them for a few years it's like print and money dude those things do nothing but go up in value and mm -hmm. so we're going to have a course on that very soon. You're talking exactly what you're about. And, and I've had cases, one of the stories I shared, Dylan, is we bought uh, way too much of an item and I was trying to get it returned to the manufacturer. I'm like, this is terrible. And we bought way too much. Winter is almost over. It was a winter kind of item, a uh, winter safety item, I could say. And uh, I was like, man, we got to send this back. And they're like, well, huge restock fee. We'll take it back. Like, I'll just hold it. Maybe it'll come back next year. Well, they stopped making it. And then suddenly we were one of the only people that had it. <laughs> yeah. Stuff, we were selling for like five times what we paid and just fly. We could have made so much more money than we did. By the time we noticed it was flying off the shelf, we're like, oh, raise the prices. <laughs> it was so yeah. great. And it's hard to get now. And, and, and I haven't looked at it in a while. Actually, it's probably time to revisit, see if they started making it. Like during COVID, they just kind of stopped making it. So yeah, a lot of times it was buy and hold. That really works. If it's hot, you buy it and hold some of it, it's probably going to pay off. So again, this is some of the getting away from the crowd. And we didn't intend to make that the theme of today's show, but I like the theme of like, do a little more work than what other people are willing to do. Go a little further, yeah. hold the inventory a little longer, be a little more persistent. Man, that's where the opportunities are. Yeah. And, and for those of you that, that are cautious with that, here's one thought that came to my head too about that. Would I say that I stopped doing toys because it was no longer profitable? What I meant was every toy I would sell would basically pay for itself and make me zero profit because the competition got so high. I find that, I don't know what you, but I find that very common that people will lower the price so much that you literally, your profit margin is like basically zero or like 10 cents, or like 50 cents, like really ridiculously low. And so here's my point in bringing this up is that, okay, so you buy a hundred of an item or 10 of a, or 10 of 10 different items, whatever you do, um, you're holding those items. Let's say that they, they, it never does change. And it's just a year later, it's still the same price. Guess what? Put them on Amazon, sell them, get your money back. So you still get your money back. It was a waste of time, a waste of effort, but you didn't lose any ridiculous amount of money. Usually you can still sell the item and get your money. You paid for it back by selling it. At least I found that to often be the case. Not always, yeah. but often the case. You know, it, that's the way I like to position this business opportunity. When I'm talking to people, I say, imagine there was a machine that you could slide money into. Your worst case scenario, 99% of the time was, you're going to get your money back. Yeah, with some effort, plus but that's some. it. Many times, plus some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your worst case, though, is you get your money back out of the machine. And how much money would you slide into that? Like, you were, it's not a zero risk thing. I don't want to say that because then people go out and buy a bunch of, you know, crazy inventory that they never should have bought. If you yeah. know how to do your research, your worst case scenario is you're going to get all or almost all of your <clears throat> money back if you made a really yeah. bad decision. The good case scenarios, which is the vast majority of the time, once you're good at this, is you're getting back some nice returns and you're rolling your money over quickly. That's a beautiful business model. That is the envy of business models. Mm -hmm. Most businesses are looking at a very real possibility of completely losing the money that they put into inventory and investments and research. Oh, yeah. They may get nothing back. That's the realistic bankrupt, possibility yeah. on just about any business model. Yeah. Okay? You may get nothing. Here you're saying your worst case is you get your money back. Yeah, go in, go in with confidence, yeah. learn the skills. That's the beauty of the replens model is once you're good at it, man, it may have to wait a month or two and your money comes back. Yeah, we had to sell it for break even. Okay, well, yeah, put it into some better inventory. But the one other thing I do want to mention too, was since we're on this point, Dylan, of price competition is just because everyone else is racing to the bottom, keep in mind that every day a large number of transactions on the popular ASINs, especially the popular listings are going for well above buy box. It may not show up on any software you have. It may not show up on Keepa. If you don't know what Keepa is, go listen to episode 369. But if it's a popular item, there are people saying, Hey, you know what? I don't care what the buy box says right now. I don't care what all the price competition says. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. I need one of these by four o'clock. I'm in a prime now zone in the united states especially i want it fast if i have to pay eight more dollars i'm fine with that and they grab one of the pricey units that's in a warehouse near them that can be delivered mm. quickly so if you park your prices higher than the crowd and wait 30 days on fast moving asins quite often you'll be rewarded very generously you're not going to be the guy selling 30 a day you know stocking up a thousand at a time you're not him you're the guy <laughs> yeah. stocking up five or ten at a time 
selling three or four a month, well above buy box, right? Very profitable, very nice, easy pace. You're not taking any big risks. If it doesn't sell after 30 to 45 days, yeah, I'll get my money back and put it into something else. Yeah. It's a nice, slow pace, low risk way to do. And that's why I love replens there as well. It's not about seeking those price discounts and pounding the other sellers into submission with my lower prices. It's, I can get in and out of any of these ASINs anytime I want to. Low risk, like I said, nice pace. Uh, so just throwing those things out there for folks who are thinking, oh, wow, the price is always tanking. Well, it doesn't have to. The only reason it tanked is because you followed it down. Stay up there. See what yeah. Wait a month. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, I was always wondering why there were some sellers that were way higher than the buy box and they kept it there for so long. And and I mean, I had some some theories, but I didn't realize the whole yeah. like checking what warehouse and where the you know, shipping, because it's all FBA. So I'm, I wasn't really aware of how that all works. Podcast episode 554, Dylan. If you haven't heard it yet, you'll love it. It's basically the ignore the buy box philosophy of replans. Five, 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 four. Five, five, four. Yeah. And for listeners that down to the show there. today who haven't heard it, yeah. I basically just kind of break down when we ignore the buy box entirely. I don't care what the other sellers are doing. If it's a fast mm-hmm. moving item, I'll let, my, I'll let it sit out there at a, a price that I like. I don't care what the other sellers are doing. It's a price that I like. I'm going to let it sit there for 30 yeah. to 45 days without touching it. And a lot of times, man, mm-hmm. enough times, often enough to be very worth doing, you're going to see those things sell. Like, why did someone just pay $45 for that? There's literally 18 people, $10 cheaper than me. Yeah. Well, because, you, because you're thinking of Amazon as one big warehouse and everyone's in their price sensitive shopping in this warehouse. That's not how it works. Amazon has 200 warehouses and the buy box doesn't always go to the same person across the country. It's very much regional and plenty of people are saying, I need this thing now. <laughs> and, and there's only one in a warehouse near me. That's the one I want. Yeah. And I, I've often held it to the point where like other people run out of stock and then, and then mine all sell like very, very quickly as well. So that, that, that yeah. part I knew about holding on, but I didn't quite realize that the other part, the um, regional so, advantage. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah, pretty something, cool. Something to pay attention to for sure. All right, man, let's keep, yeah. let's keep rolling with your story. Yeah. Okay. So we're in 2019 and I had just started food now. And mm-hmm. basically what happened was one of my products, so I was getting like $0 days, $10 days, $25 days. And also I got over a, an over $200 day. Um, this is back 2019 in the fall. And uh, I was like, okay. And that was almost all one item that did that. And then a couple others. And I'm like, okay, what if I could find a hundred like that? Because mm-hmm. then I have a, you know, then that, then, then that's a real number too. Or, or even just 10 like that. If I can make it a $2,000 day, like what, what, what would that look like? And so that was kind of where it started to become a bit more real. And I was able to buy more of that item and have it sell again, the whole replens. And I was like, okay, hey, now, now this is starting to look a little more real. But it was still only two hundred dollars of sales, which is definitely not two hundred dollars of profit. Which even if it was profit, still wouldn't be nearly enough to live anything off of. So at the time, I was uh, I, I got a full time job working at a school. So I was an educational assistant at a school, and that's a very exhausting job. If you've never worked in the education system, working with kids from the ages of like ten to thirteen, and so I did that full time. And then I remember. Uh, like once or twice a week, then I would go shopping for stuff as well. And then I'd be back at like nine or 10. So those are tiring days. And then on the weekends as well, we do some of that. So that was kind of a tiring time and uh, kind of lost some motivation from it. I believe if I remember correctly, I probably started doing it less and less and kind of just, but I still wanted to do this, but it was just for now, I just need to save a little bit of money, whatever. So I was kind of going on like that. And then uh, I guess someone as a blessing in disguise, um, though of course it has a lot of bad things, but I mean, it, I used it for the best and that was COVID-19 and 2020 hit and I lost my job. And so I was like, well, I guess I'll work on my business now, <laughs> now, I, now that I have time. Right. And so I just, I decided to, with my time, spend my time working on my Amazon business. And that is really what, what changed it for me. So, I mean, you don't need a pandemic to do that. And I hope that it doesn't have to be what does it for you. But if you're, if you're wondering, like, does it make a difference moving to part-time or moving away? Like, like say you have a business that's already going, like, like definitely start it while you're working. I'm not saying quit your job immediately. That's the last thing I'm saying. 
Right. But I'm saying if you're wondering, like if you're starting to teeter totter between the two and you're starting to realize that you really can't properly do this business, which is real and working. Let's say like, like not, not just our word for it, but you've seen it happen. It's working. You're literally running a business, but you're obviously not giving it proper attention because of your job. And you want that business to thrive and you choose the business. Like, like you, you have both and you want to do that. And I, I was very much like, I do not want to be an educational assistant for the rest of my life. I don't want to become a teacher. I don't want to go to school. Because that was also part of that. I was like, okay, maybe I want to go to school and become a teacher. I wasn't sure. I decided that it was fine, but it's not for me. And so I chose, and of course, COVID-19 made my choice very definite, um, but I definitely chose that I want to do this business. And I'm very grateful I did. And I believe that you would also be grateful too, if you're at that point, you're at that spot where you're wondering, will it make a difference when my business actually grow if I decide to take that leap? Yes, it will. It definitely will. If it's working now, it'll just work more if you give it more of your energy and effort. And even if you work 80 hours a week, um, 40 hours on your job, 40 hours on Amazon, those 40 hours you give to Amazon are going to be at maybe 20% productivity or less because you're so exhausted and you're not going to give it your proper creativity, your proper effort. Even if you try as hard as possible, no matter how much grit you have, you know, there's only so much energy your mind has to really devote to something, especially when it involves being creative, which being an entrepreneur involves a lot of creativity, not just solving not just problems. manpower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, solving problems, figuring out new ideas, making contacts, connections, conversations, and, and studying new material, and being motivated to do things that yeah. got to be done, even when you don't want to do them. You know that it takes a lot of energy. There's a tipping point that I've kind of started observing. I don't know that I've ever verbalized this before, Dylan, but you know the people who say. I can do five or 10 hours a week. That's all I got. And it's going to take them 500 hours to get to the place where someone who says, you know what, I'm going to give this thing 20 or 30 hours a week. That person who, instead of 10 hours a week, you're doing it 20 or 30 a week. Within a couple hundred hours, you're going to pass up the guy who's just taking a nice slow pace, you know, 10 hours a week and 500 hours to state it differently. The person who's going 20 to 30 hours a week is going to be well ahead of the person who just does it a few hours a week because there's a tipping point where the synergy starts to kick in. And within two or 300 hours, the guy who's doing it, you know, putting in the time, you're going to be well past the person who put in 500 hours because you're spending more of your time and energy. Like you said, your creativity. And mm-hmm. another way to say the same thing, if I'm not being clear yet, because it's hard to do numbers sometimes when people are listening is, the distractions that come with picking it up and putting it down, picking it up. Yes, for down, sure. Picking it up and putting it down. There's a lot of mental lifting that goes into trying to remember where you left off. And if yep. you could just carve out some uninterrupted, focused time and attention on your business very intentionally, you're going to go so much further, so much faster. Yeah. It's like, like hey, when you read a book, five minutes, I think I'll work on it a little bit. Right. You know, yeah. That's it's the same with, with, it's the same with reading a book, right? Like I was just, just seeing that in my head. analogy. Like you're, you're reading a book and I do this all the time, especially audiobooks, a lot of mm-hmm. audiobooks, And especially if it's, if it's like a novel or something like that. And they're very much dependent upon like the previous chapter to know what's going on in the next chapter. You mm-hmm. put that book down, you come back at, to it a week later or e- even even a few days later. It's you're not nearly as into it as if you read on like a regular basis. You're like in the story. You get so much more out of it. Same book. Yeah. You know, same amount of time spent reading it. Yeah. One page at a time over the course of a year versus a weekend. Right. Yeah. Like you really absorb that thing. You know, like get in there, get yeah. after it to the greatest extent you can. You know, turn off Netflix. Be, I call it that period of intense focused effort. I mean, if you could yeah. plow through that for a month or two, that intense focused effort and really get it, you can change the course of your life. And then you start to build some really special routines and, and, You find that freedom, that flexibility of schedule. Hey, we'll get back to today's episode in just a moment. A short announcement for you. You've got to go check out EncoreBusinessGroup.com. That's a prep center that serves the loyal listeners of this program. Be sure to tell them that we sent you. They'll take great care of you. They really care about your business growing because if you succeed, they succeed. They can help you manage your inventory. Have all your stuff shipped to them instead of shipping it to your house. They'll help you with all your logistics, your fulfillment, your prepping for FBA. A tremendous partner of this community. We're so grateful for their partnership. That's EncoreBusinessGroup.com. They're a great prep center serving the sellers of Silent Sales Machine Radio. Thanks for your partnership, guys. Hey, let's get back to today's episode. 
I call it that period of intense focused effort. I mean, if you can yeah. plow through that for a month or two, that intense focused effort and really get it, you can change the course of your life. And then you start to build some really special routines and, and you find yeah. that freedom, that flexibility of schedule. Yeah, I'm a really huge advocate for quality hours over quantity over quantity hours. Like that's I find there's a big difference between the two. And it's not even you can't really even say it in terms of percentages unless you're just a factory worker making boxes or something. Yeah. But if you're like an entrepreneur building a business, even I would say even 20 quality hours where you're fully focused and you're fully into it versus twice that many. Um, just quantity hours after you're already tired and you've already worked 40 hours, you're doing 40 more and you're just going through it. I'm still going to be ahead of you with my 20 just because of the fact that I have quality hours with my mind fully in it, fully engaged. Yeah. And I want to come up with things and or, or rather you would come up with things that you would never come up with otherwise because that's your mind crazy. just cannot go there right now. And that's yeah. just the human, it's just the fact that we're human and we don't have limitless yeah. ca capabilities like that. I, so limit. Yeah, the guy doing 20 hours a week will be ahead of the guy doing 40. If the yeah. guy doing 40 is also working a full-time job trying to squeeze yeah. in. I love the point you're making, and I completely agree. And having coached at this point 10,000 students, 100%, man. Although there are those handful of exceptions out there. You know, there's, there's single moms with three kids and two jobs, mm -hmm. and they're somehow finding 25, 30 hours a week on top of an exhausted schedule, exhausting schedule. And they've built beautiful businesses. <laughs> oh, and it can still work, right? Yeah, you can, can still, still do work. it. But it, I mean, it's like, I don't know how they do it. I don't know where they, how yeah. they dig deep enough to do that. You know, getting up at four in the morning and getting in an hour or mm -hmm. two before work and then getting the kids ready. Like, how do you do that for yeah. a year or two or three? I but don't, then, yeah. I don't have that inside of me. But then take that exceptional person who did that take away the two extra jobs and let her just devote those 30 hours a week to this and yes. scrap the other job i bet you that, that the business she makes would make more than the other two jobs combined with it Absolutely. would have made anyway so even though it's already a success story i mean you can succeed however you want to succeed i'm just and you can believe what you want to believe you can disagree but i'm very firm and from what i've seen in people and what i've observed is that people with really strict regiments like really like like they, they make their schedule really really well and they take into account things like uh, even just the ability to go for a walk and clear your head that's something i do often as well just putting in some good habits around your work and you can't do that if you're working three other jobs and and even though you right. i'm not saying that you won't succeed if you do that because you absolutely can like you just shared but you'd succeed better <laughs> yeah that's faster, that, that's sooner. really the sooner. faster and, sooner and, 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 in, healthier, and in new more ways sustainable way yeah and in healthier ways yeah because then I mean, we're just talking we're just talking for this, like, like in terms of business success. But if we go into in terms of emotional well-being, and we go into in terms of like psychological health and how well you'll be able to be there for all the other things you're doing, like more present with your family, all those sorts of things. That's another whole conversation. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I, I there's effects there. Sustainability. Too. You know, is this a sustainable yeah. pattern I'm in now? And you can do it. You can have that period of intense focused effort, but it's not going to last more than a few months, and you're going to break. So yeah. that, you know, you throw, you know, it's not a balanced thing we're proposing. Go all mm -hmm. in, out of balance yeah. for a few months, but then find that sustainable pattern and those routines. Exactly. Yeah. And that's how you true, that's where the true growth comes. The the yeah. less I work on my business, the bigger it gets and the better it goes. Because if I'm the one nose to the grindstone, just pounding away at this thing, that means I'm not putting the right people in place. I'm not building processes mm -hmm. and systems. Right. So I'm building a business. I'm not building a job for myself that requires me to just grind every day. Right. That's a good, yeah, that's a good point. It does require that grinding. Mm -hmm. And then it settles into this sustainable, healthy pattern. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to, you know, I, I don't do anything before noon most days because I'm, I get in a good run. I study, I eat a good meal. I take my time. I spend some time with my family and now it's time. And, but my, my business is up and running and rocking because I put exactly. good, people, good systems in place. But I'm not quite there yet. Right? When I record these podcast episodes, it's always after 1 p.m. Eastern almost every time because I've just <laughs> I've left my mornings open for whatever might come along and you know, case That's awesome. fire to put out or whatever. But it wasn't that way 20 years ago. 20 years ago, it was grind, 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 build systems, build routines, intense focused effort. Uh, but it's yeah. worth it's worth the trip. Yeah, so that is that is how that that went. That part of my story followed exactly that message of I had that. So let's let's see here. I started 
Um, my job in EA in October of 2019 and it ended in April of 2020. So October, November, December, January, February, March. So about six to seven months, somewhere in there, of doing that, of doing that intense, thus like like working at the school and my double Amazon schedule, business, yeah. the double thing. And then in those those seven months, what I built in those seven months versus what I built in. So after that, now I don't know. Is there a way I can go? You can go back in your reports, and I can see the numbers from from that year. Can I do that? Absolutely. I don't really know. Yeah. Just, yeah. If you go into the have, sales reports, I'll show you the, yeah. the past year's totals. So. Yeah, I'll have to. I, I don't use reports as much as I should, uh, but like, uh, I want to go back there. I, I should have done it before this podcast. It's been an interesting thing to look at. Oh, um, approximations maybe are fine. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll throw an update on the Facebook group or something at some point sure. when I do it. But I believe that it was very much a turning point right after that. And I remember for sure that what happened was, so May, June, July, August, September, those next five months is when I worked fully at this. And then I got my first paycheck at the end of those five months. Um, as in like, obviously I was making money before that for the business, but now I made excess money the point where I had money in my business and I could actually pay myself something. Right. Um, so that was the first time that I actually got a paycheck right. in this whole thing. And, and this has been your primary source of income since then. Yes. So, uh, so uh, one more detail I have to add in this. So in the middle of this whole thing, something I'm kind of skipping over is the fact that um, I'm doing this not by myself, but my, my dad, like I mentioned earlier, was mm-hmm. watching me in the beginning and he actually decided, hey, I, I want to do this with you. Um, so at, at one point during that uh, 2019, 2020, and there right near the beginning already, uh, he started you know shopping with me. Um, he was uh, retired and looking for a, a, a secondary thing to do. Um, so he was like, this is a great thing. He wanted it to be less physical on his body. Um, so because he's also a carpenter on the side in the past, top of his other job he had. And so he was going to do more carpentry, but he was like, hey, this seems like a really good op- alternative. And he's like, He's like 60 years old. So even he got into this with me and uh, I've been like the primary leader of this, but he was helping me all along the way in the beginning. He let me use his truck once orders started getting larger. I need to pick up more amounts, just things like that. And so he was a huge help in the beginning and helping get me started. I once started making larger orders instead of having to, and you totally can, but instead of going to like a bank to get like maybe a bit of a loan or worrying about a credit card he was able to give me a, you know, like a little bit more money to work with than what a 19 year old has. Um, yeah. And uh, then I was able to buy, instead of buying 10, I could buy a hundred of an item, right. Uh, of different items. And sure. uh, so that's, that's where I started to, he's, he really helped me. So I just want to make sure I, I mentioned that. And I really appreciate how he's helped me. He's still doing this with me. We're doing it together. That's um, awesome. And so he's more part-time involved. I'm more full-time involved. Um, but either way, we're still partners in this. And so he's been a big part of uh, it's just getting me started. Still running the whole thing? No. So uh, that's for, maybe we'll continue the story now so we don't run out of time here because there's still a few more details that I haven't, I haven't told. Well, we're still back in 2020 here <laughs> and we're in 2023 now. So there's a couple of things that happened. So first of all, uh, around, the, around that time in, 20, in 2020 to turn 21, so like just, just going on from there, I... My cousin started to message me and say that um, he was interested in what I was doing, and he's really you no know, like what he was go, had going on wasn't working out for him, and he was really looking for for something. And he was just offering to just hey, I'll just I'll just do stuff for you for free. I just I have free time right now, and I'm I don't know what to do right now. Just I'll just, and I said no, I'll 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 pay you. I'll just hire you part time. So I just gave him like whatever minimum wage for a little while. He just did a couple of things for me. And actually, I think I gave him a, I gave him a bub when my wage to begin with. Actually, I did, and if not right away, it went up to a to a, a decent hourly rate that he could uh, that he could appreciate. Those better than the average job he could get. And then very very quickly, he went on to salary with us and working full time. And so it didn't take long. I mean months, and then eventually, and he was really on to salary full time with us. And he really really enjoys working alongside us with this as well. He manages all the online ordering, all the online stuff that there's involved. He just manages all of the Amazon account, everything. And he does a lot of, uh, of, of picking up products as well and everything. So he's, okay. he's very busy. And uh, so he's one employee that we got. And we recently hired a, a part-time packager as well. So right now we have uh, one, two, three uh, and a half, um, I guess, but soon to be four. Cause we're going to be hiring a full-time person packaging. Cause there's so much stuff to package that that's a, turning into a full-time job. So yeah, so that, that that's grown a lot. 
but how that went, I'll just share a little bit more in story format. Now I'll go back to, uh, I'll go back to 2021 there. So now we're, uh, we're into 2021 and I have my cousin working with me and now I've been getting paychecks for a good six months, you know, $2,000 a month, nothing crazy. I mean, as in that's how much I paid myself. Uh, right. And so while well, like, that was profitable and growing still team is yeah. paid. Yeah. All that, so all that assumed yourself. I yeah. put a couple of grand for myself and then didn't take long. And it was up to like three or something like that. And it stayed there, I think for a while. Anyway, that's not the most important part though. The most important part was uh, it was growing. Um, that's what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say. Um, I started to diversify products. I found a lot more variety. And that was one of the uh, tips I'd like to really share is that I really am a believer that let's say uh, how I'll do a little math here. A thousand items that sell 10 each is more powerful than one item that sells 10,000. And Absolutely. the reason for that is that if, you know, they'll pull their eggs in one basket to put the simple metaphor, but it's all about the power in the numbers, the power in the fact that the reality with Amazon is that Amazon themselves will compete with you sometimes and ruin a listing. I've had that happen. It's a real thing, but don't complain about it. Just make so many listings, so many so much variety that there's no way that they can do it all. And on yeah. top of that, you're always innovating. And that yeah. was something that I had in my head, a question I kind of asked myself and I like to ask the audience as well, is that what would you do if you knew that one year from now, every listing you have would be gone? You're going to lose, you're going to lose every listing. You, know, you have 12 months and over time for the next 12 months, every listing that you have is going to go away. What would you do? And I think the obvious answer is, well, I'd want to make a lot more listings, right? So, because yeah. by every every new listing you make, it, it, that that one's going to stay, but all the old ones, they're all going to go away in a year. Now, of course, that won't happen. But living with that kind of in mind really helps to just motivate to realize that, yeah, there is some stability, and you should relax and feel nice about that. But also know that things change, and that's what happened to me next. So, with my story, was what happened was I was I've been selling in Canada and the U.S. at this point, um, so I had learned to do both, and uh, in the U.S my sales suddenly just just died by by Amazon competitors and things happened, variety of reasons. My biggest, because I had a few killer items that were just unbelievable. And I was relying probably half half of my sales on just like those few items, Um, half of my total sales, if not more than half. During some seasons, it was it was like 80%. And then during like the year long, it'd be like about half probably. And so I was relying very heavily on those items and they basically all simultaneously basically got taken away from me for a variety of reasons. And so that was very scary. And this was in like, a tw- I think this was in 2021 that this happened. Yeah, it was in 2021. Because then in uh, 2022, that was where I started to rethink this and started to think, okay, well, let's let's just hammer down on getting more variety. Let's just hammer down on what I know what I can do. And so I just went back to what I knew I could do. And I just hammered down on that. And I just 10x it to the point where I was able to have those sales be so much better that not only did the next year not have a drop, but the next year ended up by the end of the year, ended up being higher than that year where all that, sorry, like the year that this happened, that this bad thing happened, that year was better than the year when I had those items. So like, even though I lost those items for this next year, right. it actually ended up being better. Like my, my last 12 month thing went up, even though I had lost those huge items and was seeing my sales die for a couple of months. Yeah. I still was able to change some things up, do something else and make that be so much better that, that, that it worked. And so it's really cool to know that in the middle of a really hard situation like that, when you're losing sales, your worst nightmare in a lot of ways, you can literally just keep going and then just get new ones. And to me, my biggest lesson I learned was variety, power and variety. If I ever have a good item that's out there and I'm like, this item's selling like thousand a day by itself. I'm like, that's cool. I'm not going to rely on it. It's there for now. I mean, unless you make the item yourself, like it's your product, you go through designing, you go through creating and that whole right. um, private label and everything like that, that's another whole thing. That could be different because people can't just steal that from you. But like you're doing, we're talking about the resales and replens. So with with that with the spirit of replens, yeah, you shouldn't be, put too much reliability deep, on one. In steep mile wide strategy, right? Like Yes, that, that, that is how you word it, right? Yeah, I heard that. That's exactly what I'm yeah, talking because about. Because any given ASIN could go away at any given time. And you don't want to be so reliant on a small handful. You know, we yeah. see a lot, oftentimes people will find that one early winner 
and then they'll start this vigorous research hunt for the cheapest possible price so they can go buy 500 units. I'm like, oh, that's why we have our course. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> because as soon as you place that order and it's on the way, someone's going to buy 50,000 units at half the price you just paid and jump on that ASIN. Yeah. Like, don't do it. You never want to have more than a month's worth of inventory on any ASINs. So it's exactly what I do. You do. And, and just keep finding more ASINs. That's the solution yeah. to every challenge you run into with the Replens model that we teach to our new students. And, and that can become yeah. a seven-figure business very easily. Many It has for many people. Very profitable seven-figure business is don't get too reliant on any one ASIN. Always be finding yeah. more good winning, winning Replens because you're going to lose them occasionally. So why not yeah. find five new ones for every one you lose? Now you got a business. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, th this conversation is going exactly like I expect it would. As I share these different tips and things I'm doing, it relates to something and you say it. And then it gives me nostalgia for three years ago, four years ago, when I listened to it. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I definitely mm -hmm. use that. And I and really, when I started to listen to some of your some of your podcasts, I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds familiar. Oh, yeah, I, I definitely do a version. Yeah. yeah, it's in your own exactly. language in your head, like you said. Mm -hmm. But these lessons, these foundational lessons. They stuck with me for sure. Yeah. That's tremendous. Yeah. And, and there was definitely a time where I didn't didn't quite appreciate and realize that I was, was going because like I was just kind of had my yeah, my, my head down by myself. I wasn't part of any group, any any nothing. Like for a good uh on the last two years for sure. I wasn't really part of anything. I just kind of was on my own. I mean, and I mean COVID was kind of an isolating time in some ways too. So that probably didn't help. But uh anyway, regardless, it was just uh a, a long time on my own. And then I came back here and it felt really good sharing my story on your Facebook group there and hearing the response and encouragement that felt really, really good to realize that, 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 that honestly, like just a month ago when I posted that or however long, six weeks ago, whatever it was, that was really an interesting moment for me where I was just like, wow, yeah, I, I actually have a business. I was working. That's kind of cool. Yeah. You kind of forget, you know, you, you just keep going and all of a sudden you look back and it's like, yeah, I guess I kind of am where I dreamt I would be. You know, and that's kind of like if, if someone's listening right now and you're kind of where I was in the beginning of my story or you're not even there, you're about to buy a box of toys to ship out and you're thinking like, okay, this is crazy because like now I have a business with four employees and I, and, and like you saw my post, I posted that I sold, I don't know what did I say, what, what was I post, 70,000 or 80,000 in a month. My last month was almost 100K and uh, our last year was 1.1 million. And so we've grown a lot. Those are some big fancy numbers, but really it started. And that's why I really wanted to show in the beginning, just really emphasize the fact that I used my grandpa's weight scale to weigh my box because I think it's important. This is a message behind grandpa's weight scale because it's like humble beginning, very simple. I just started and then it didn't take long with the job in between and other complications. I had struggles, I had ups and downs. Like I shared a couple um, there's obviously a lot more that I could share of really big scares that we had not too long ago, actually. And it's just, it happens. But here I am with this business and I'm very grateful. I'm sharing that post and everything and realizing like I was reading these posts four years ago. I was listening to these stories four years ago. I was listening to a future version of myself right now talking four years ago, um, sharing the same kinds of stuff. And, and now here I am. And I, I just almost feel like I almost accidentally got here. Of course, it wasn't an accident. I, I did work and I learned you things. The work. Yeah. Congratulations. But, yeah. You, you, there's no such thing as accidentally succeeding, man. You put in yeah. hard work, effort, energy, blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice, late nights, mm -hmm. you know, questioning your decisions and taking those risks, man. And you followed the system and you've built a beautiful business, man. Hey, I do, I do need just uh, to take a responsibility to the audience. What is your, what are your net margins approximately after everybody's paid? All the bills are paid. You know, what's the the net margin of your business? How yeah, you so how you like? yeah, so like with with net margins, what I usually say is that um, I make approximately like, like the the company makes approximately a third of what I sell. So I make about a thirty percent on that. So after I, I usually look at an item when I buy an item, and if it's three dollars, I try to sell it for nine or ten at the very least. Because Amazon's going to take one third about and like the things to get it there and everything that's about a third, mm -hmm. whatever. Buying the item is a third and then you want your profit to be the next one. Some items I make times five, times seven. Other items I only make, you know, a little bit less than that. It averages out to about a third. And of course, that's not in my pocket. That's money that that's still is going to the business. Paid. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, that would be yeah. Like if I if, yeah, I would say it's before the team is paid, and then also I put a lot back to reinvest and to keep it growing. Of course. And so I don't nearly pay myself. By no means do I pay myself three hundred thousand dollars, but uh, I do make a livable wage for four people. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just think of it that way. And it's you know, scaling, like and it's opening new opportunities, right? Yeah. You're, you've got flexibility of schedule. And yeah. As you and you know, when I look at a guy who's kind of at your level, the next level is partnering up, having relationships, getting into masterminds, other opportunities, maybe some of those hot sellers reaching out to the manufacturer saying, Hey, I've got a I've got an idea for you. Let me run something past you. We've been selling your stuff for a while now. How about I help you get onto Amazon on your own account? And I'll do mm-hmm. all the work, no risk to you whatsoever. I just want to set your account up. And then you can, you know, go through the the process of branding, you know, getting a <laughs> brand on Amazon. And now you're locked in and you don't have to worry about the other resellers. And so you're diversifying your income. You're you're getting clients, happy, happy services, you're you're you know, spreading your relationships out across just like we talk about inch deep, mile wide on the inventory, you kind of do the same thing with your business strategies overall and relationships. And, you know, it always involves meeting more people, having more conversations. Yeah. That's that, the next level. that would be my one, my one uh, regret. I would say that I had for the last two years was that I did distance myself from communities and from other people to talk about this, mm-hmm. um, that I did end up just going, going in on my own. I would not recommend that. I would recommend, I mean, I, I did hire people right away and I'm glad that I was, I was very quick to, there's a job there. I'm going to hire someone that I, I, and I recommend that to everybody too. When you seem like, I think, I mean, I'm not getting paid that well, but I think there's a job here for someone do it because they will pay, you'll pay them off and you'll make an income off of that's how businesses work. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to be happy because you gave them a great job. And that's the biggest response to make sure you're giving someone a great job. That's something that I really take pride in is that I'm giving someone I'm paying them above what the average person would pay this person if they were elsewhere. And I'm giving them a, an environment that they can love and enjoy. And, and so like when my guy's packaging, like he really likes to listen to metal. So he, I just hear him cranking metal music downstairs while, yeah. while, while I'm like packaging. Cause I, I live above the place where we uh, do the packaging. So it's all still in my house kind of. Yeah. So it's just uh, make a great job for someone. And on top of that, You've made a business for yourself and not just a job for yourself. That's what you're saying earlier. It's a business. Yeah. So now you get to benefit others and you, of course, get the bonus. So this, for me, whatever your bonus is, for me, my bonus that I wanted and all this is I wanted the freedom and flexibility that an online entrepreneur can have. I love traveling. I've been to like 17 different countries um, and I hope to be to 50 different countries or more um, in the next 10 years. So like, it's just, that's it's enabled me to do that. And uh, I, I will admit like, selling products on Amazon isn't like my life's passion that keeps me going through life. Like it's not like I've always wanted to sell products on Amazon. It's, you know, it's not exactly the case, but I have always wanted to have a business that can help other people by giving them great employment. Yeah. And that it would give me flexibility to do these things I want to do in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, also give me the creative freedom that I have now where I am now expanding to new ideas beyond Amazon right. and beyond selling stuff in general, like just completely new ideas, new areas that I get to explore that I would never get to explore if I just worked 40 hours a week. And like I said, I was too tired, didn't have enough quality hours of the day to dedicate to that. So it's given me so much freedom. So, and if you're someone out there thinking that like, I don't know if I really like this that much. I mean, it's okay. I don't mind it, but I don't know if I love it. It's like, neither do I. I mean, I I like it, but I don't love it. It's not like my passion I sell on Amazon, but it's being an entrepreneur, the spirit of being in, in business. That's the thing that I love. And what it can give me all around that, that's the thing that I love. Not, and not to mention for when I have a family one day, the freedom that I'll be able to have with that family to go and do different events with them is something I very much look forward to as well. That's great. Yeah, the flexibility. But you know, that topic of pursuing your passions, I think it's actually done far more damage than good. I would argue it does nothing but damage when people are like, oh, I want to pursue my passions. Like everyone's just kind of accepted that as like good, reasonable way to live your life. No, it's tragically disastrous the vast majority of the time that it's absorbed into into especially you know young people. And the reason I say that is pursue your passions in your free time. If you've got some hobbies and interests, that's great. Mm-hmm. Find a way to meet the needs of other people. Find opportunities to create businesses that provide great jobs, great income, serving others well. And then you'll find yourself becoming very passionate about whatever it is 
that's yeah. related to that business. And if you know you're passionate about your hobby, whatever, that's great. You got plenty of spare time now. So instead of starting out saying, hey, the world owes me money because I'm passionate about this, like what if I'm passionate about sitting by myself on the bank of a river fishing? Like who's going to pay me to do that? I can be passionate about that in my spare time, right? I'm going to mm -hmm. go find a business that serves others well, and I'll become very passionate about that business. Yeah. As it starts to succeed and people are paying me and I'm making a profit and my customers are happy and my clients are happy and my employees who work for me, the people doing work, I can become very passionate about just about any business model if it's profitable and serving others well, right? So I actually commit a, a part of the silent sales machine book to that concept because one of the lies I think our culture has kind of started to just accept is, hey, the first thing you want to do is discover your passions and then find a way to monetize them. Like, no, that's that could be disastrous for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. right? I'm passionate about playing basketball. I'm not good enough to be in the NBA. So yeah. what if I just spent 30 hours, 40 hours, 50 hours a week training, trying to get into the NBA as a guy in his early 50s? Like, man, it's not going to happen, dude. Stop pursuing that passion. Think you're going to attach some money to it at some point. I have fun playing ball. It's a hobby I'm passionate about, but I'm not trying to make money there. I'm yeah, trying to make money a, where there's opportunities to serve, right? So I love properly the defining the way you just kind of laid it out. Like that was the process you went into. And you want to travel? Travel with passion, man. Have a great time. You've got the money, the flexibility, the time freedom to do that now. Because yeah. you take a laptop with me and I can still do some work while I'm gone. Like it's what just, a great feeling, right? You know, like that's that's the whole side. And that's the idea of like defining uh, like what passion really is. And it's like, well, it's not just the thing you find most fun. That's not passion. And it's like, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, a lot of people have heard of this guy named Jordan Peterson, but he's oh, someone that I've listened to a fair amount. And mm -hmm. something he talks all about is, is pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. And I've really found that to be a very important thing. And about like, he talks about like the, kind of like the lie of happiness, if you want to call it that. And how like, like really happiness isn't going to take you through anything that's difficult in life. What will take you through the difficult things is meaning because yeah. as soon as, you know, somebody you love dies, you're not going to be happy but you can still have meaning in your life and you can go and you can press forward and you can do something that's, you know, is meaningful and then it'll help you get through that time, but you won't be happy. And then later on, you can find happiness. And when you find happiness, enjoy it. It's fun. If you're happy playing basketball, it's great. But I can guarantee you that every, if you ask someone in the NBA, they are often hate playing basketball now oh, yeah. because they've done it's it so work. much yeah. that now it's work. And it's just, yeah. just how things, and it doesn't it mean, doesn't mean that they're not passionate. Yeah. Like they're so passionate about basketball, but they're not always happy. They aren't always feeling good mm -hmm. doing it. And that's why I think like pursuing what you're passionate about, if you word it correctly or define it correctly is true. You should pursue your passion about, but your passion isn't necessarily what you think it is. It's not that thing that you find that's really fun. It's actually the thing that you're going to find meaningful. Yeah. And that's a lot more deep. And that means like you're going to start. And if you don't know what that thing is, which I had no idea what that thing was going to be for me, then just start an Amazon business or, or something, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, like, so yeah. like just start somewhere. And like, for me, I just, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really planned. I just found this podcast and then I started, like you heard my story, started this business, found your, you know, your, 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 your community. Um, and I did read your book also, by the way, I really enjoyed it. Um, and found lots of encouragement from your message and what you're talking about. Um, and on top of that, I also found encouragement from the stories and I learned a lot of valuable physical things to try and to do, which I really appreciate. I love to like things that are tangible that I can actually do. And then next thing you know, here I am. And yeah, some days I'm not super enjoying it. Other days I am. Some days I question why I'm doing this. And then other, and then when I get the broader perspective though, I'm like, wait, no, I, this, this is amazing. Like I created this, this life for myself. I mean, even if I was working a job, you know, I could still find passion in that too. I don't have to work through Amazon, but this is what I'm doing. Like I, you, you can do anything. And I've chosen to do this. And, and if you want to choose to start a business that's that's profitable, that's um, relatively simple to start, and then has infinite room for flexibility, creativity, and extra difficult steps you can take to then grow it. I, I think selling online, selling on Amazon, and of course, I think I, I think you saw you had a course on Walmart.com now as well, because that's something else I've been doing as well, selling on Walmart.com. And uh, I'm starting to sell on Etsy. I'm going to start, I'm actually re recently applied to start selling on Amazon UK. And I'm going to start expanding to Europe. Um, like there's just so many opportunities. And those are, I'll, I'll say like, especially like the UK thing, very complicated. There's a lot more things with, a, with like registering for taxes, like that and things. And right. that's where you can start to get overwhelmed. And it is, 
But the thing is that it could fail and oh, well, I'm just trying it. It's on the side, something that's just going on. I send in some paperwork. I wait six months because they're governments. So that's how long they take to get back to. And then you wait and you send something again. And it's just kind of been going on for almost a year now. That's fine. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. It's just one of my 10 background projects that are just moving. And that's what I've been able to create for myself. And that's why I encourage you, if anybody is more in a uh, middle spot where you, you're, you're actually, you have a business now, it's, it's fairly profitable. You're making some money on it. And you're thinking about hiring people. Well, what hiring people can do is it can create the job that's the most, it can create a job for you that's more valuable than what you're doing right now. And that is the job of being creative to grow your business in ways that no one else can do it. So you can teach someone to pack your boxes. You cannot teach someone to have your brain and your thoughts and your understanding to then create new ideas for your business. Only you can do that. And so I spend maybe 10 hours a week-ish on actually my what's going on right now stuff. And, and of course, when there's fires and it's a bit more, but if things are going well, that's about it. And otherwise, I get to spend all of my week working on new things, growing new ideas. Some are Amazon related, some aren't. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, I think that's the best position to be in as a business owner. Um, I can't imagine a better place to be in. It also provides the most flexibility because if you're not going to show up, you're going to do something else, you're going to got something else you got to go do for a week or you're going to travel, something like that. Um, you can just dumb down that part of your work and you just won't work on those new things for a little while and then take and then come back and continue them when you get back. So it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. And I feel very, very blessed to be here. But uh, I also know that it's something that I created. So I also feel proud of it at the same time. Yeah. And you should, there's a, there's a good kind of pride. It's not the arrogance. It's more yeah, like exactly. grati- the gratitude kind of pride, right? Like, that, yeah, that's why, that's why I say things. I feel grateful and blessed first. And yeah. then I ended with, I'm also take yeah. pride in it. Um, but all, all of the above, it's not just like every now and again, I thought like, you know, I, I thought that like the word luck would come in there. And then I was like, that's not the right word for it though. It's, it's definitely not, not lucky. Mm-hmm. Were some things within what happened or some of the things maybe lucky that I happened to walk in on that one thing every now and again? Good timing, good sure. fortune, perhaps. There's yeah. some of those things, but everybody has that for everything. Sure. If you're going to put yourself out there for any kind of business, you will run into good and bad luck. You run into good and bad chances here and there. You can call it whatever you want to call it, but but you just have to be there to experience the good luck about like If you're not trying, you'll never get a chance to even see it happen for you. Yeah. So like I got some good breaks and some bad breaks throughout my business. And if you start yours and you start going after it, you will get good breaks and you will get bad breaks, but you won't be there to find that out if you're not there, you know, like yeah. you can't get it if you're not there, obviously. Right. So yeah. just put get yourself out there. Yeah. yeah. That's the possibilities that are available now. That's how the world has changed because of the internet, especially uh, I, I call it the greatest paradigm shift in economics is the internet because now instead of taking huge risks with a small chance that maybe someday your business works out, you can take tiny risks and have potentially a huge business. Yeah. That's how the internet changed the game. The risk it's huge. has changed. The risk bar has been lowered. Anybody mm-hmm. can step up to that bar and tiptoe over it gently. And now you're in the game. You know, you don't yeah. have to take years and have a degree and have millions of dollars. And like, that's, those are the people yeah. that started businesses before the internet. Now it's like, Anybody got a little motivation, got a little extra time, are mm-hmm. you willing to turn off Netflix for 10 hours a week? Dude, you're golden. Let's go. Right. So I, I love that. I love that aspect. And that's why I've been so just addicted to e-commerce from day one, man. It's uh I was one of the, I feel like I'm one of the early guys, man, going back. This has been a 22 plus year journey for me. It just like the light bulb started coming on for me. And I'm like, this changes everything. Anybody can now have a business. And so I just love that I got to spend my life. Working with great guys like you, Dylan, and watching their businesses grow over the years, it's been a true pleasure, man. Well, you did a great job. We've we've gone pretty long today. We need to start winding this one down. I've got some commitments I've got to get to here fairly quickly. But yeah, yeah, for um, sure. <laughs> it's been great getting to know you, man, and hearing your story. And I'm super yeah, excited absolutely. to see where you're going to go from here. I love seeing young folks kind of getting into this because you've got a lot of time now. Time's on your side. You can build some really great things and. And uh, thank you for spending some time with us today, man. That was time well spent. Yeah, and thanks for inviting me on. And when I saw your message there, I was very excited because like I said, this is a podcast I listened to years and years ago. Like or for me, years and years ago, for you, maybe it's not that long ago, but for me, four years ago was a while. So yeah, it was really it's, awesome. It's and fifth of your thought, life. And for me, it's like a 10th. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little different that way. But I was, uh, yeah, I, I it was really, really encouraging to be on here. And uh, 
yeah, I just, I feel like I've learned some stuff about myself and I learned some new ideas from you as well. So this has been great. Yeah. Well, great hanging out with you as well, my friend. And uh, I loved your story. I'm sure there's a lot more that we can learn from you over the, over time. And I'll tell this to you, Dylan, as I say, anyone in our community who's used our content and ideas to build successful businesses is, Hey, if you see things that we could be doing better or different or a gap in what we offer, Hey, step into leadership. You've built a beautiful business. That's the most significant step in becoming a leader in our community is you've taken the ideas that we teach and you've built a mm-hmm. beautiful business. Step two, if you got a teacher's heart, which you do, you used to be in teaching when you consider that as a career, you're, you're very eloquent. You, you enjoy sharing examples and ideas and, and illustrations, man, you could just step into a role. So let us know, you know, contact me offline, obviously not to extend this conversation, but contact me if that's something you, Dylan, or anyone listening to this is like, yeah, that that's me. I think I could do this. That's where our team of 111 plus right now, last I looked, 100, 111 of us who are pouring into this community in a leadership capacity as a content creator, a coach, an administrator of some kind in the Facebook group, mm-hmm. that sort of thing, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. To the team at the point that it makes sense, just another income stream, right? Diversifying yep. your income stream, serving others with excellence. That's the next logical step that I can see for you, buddy. But hey, thanks again, man. It was good hanging out with you, Dylan. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. All right. And to the business building warriors who listened in today, thanks for spending some time with Dylan and I. I love doing these interviews. It's the best part of my job. If you want to listen to hundreds of other people who have used the ideas that we teach around here to build beautiful businesses, that's what our podcast is all about. If this is the first time you've listened to our show, go back in time. You're going to find people of all ages, all backgrounds, all over the world, all different levels of education and income who have built amazing businesses using the ideas that we teach in this community. So go to silentgym.com, find our Facebook group, our Amazon seller training course, and all the episodes that you maybe have missed over the years. We'll have another great episode for you again very soon. Until then, God bless the business building warriors. We're in your corner and we'll talk to you soon. Hey, before I let you go, one last reminder about an easy way to save money on every purchase you make online or in stores by using discounted gift cards. There's a free special report that's been set up by our latest sponsor, Arbitrage Card. You can get this report. It tells you how to go find these great discounted cards. Go to silentgym.com slash gift cards. That's silentgym.com slash gift cards, all one word. The link is in the show notes as well. Go grab that report.